Welcome everyone. This is how to get organized as a homeschool mom with Charlotte Cantrell. And this is Lisa Nearing from Turner Homeschool Academy. And we're really excited that you've joined us for this free workshop. Um, so, so many great things to share. I know as homeschoolers, we often feel like we're taking care of everybody else and we forget to get our own self organized sometimes. So it's a great time of the year to get organized. I want to tell you guys about a couple things that are coming up. We have our um, summer school is starting on Monday. June 6th, and it will go for six weeks through July 15th. We've got some great classes there. And um, go check it out at TrueNorthHomeschoolAcademy.com. And then we have our first ever virtual summit happening June 20th to 24th. Um, so many great workshops and speakers and panels. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun. But um, I'm really excited to introduce Charlotte to you. Um, she actually, we met because she, her son took classes with us last year, and she reached out to me and said, hey, we need some teachers. And so we started chatting and she's going to be such a great, great fit for us, but she's been homeschooling for several years and she's coming on board to teach um, some of the adapted classes as well as the executive functioning skills classes. So as we were talking, I was like, Hey, you want to do a workshop for moms too? <laughs> Cause we need all the help we can get. So Charlotte, I'm so glad you're here and I'm going to let you take it away. I made you co-host, but if you need help sharing, sharing slides. Right. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much, Lisa. Excellent. Let me share my screen. I put together a little presentation here. Hello, everybody. Like Lisa said, I'm going to be a teacher with True North this year. I'm really excited. And one of the classes I'm going to teach is on executive functioning. And we're going to talk about what that is and how that relates to us because it sounds very clinical, um, very, you know, corporate, <laughs> but we really are um, the executives of our home as a parent, not just a mom, but as a parent. And so we have so much on us. We can probably all relate to all the pictures that I found here, um, all the aspects of um, not only being a mom, but a homeschool mom. So we are going to go ahead and get started. And we will talk first, who am I? First of all, I'm a follower of Christ, redeemed by him. I am a wife, and a homeschooling mom of two. Uh, my family has been a host family for foreign exchange students for quite a while now. Of course, that changed with the pandemic, but we're looking forward to getting all of our students back with us soon. Um, I'm a private ESL tutor. Uh, I have a network of students that I teach online. I'm a True North parent, like Lisa said, and I am going to be a new teacher with True North this fall. And I was speaking with Lisa a couple of weeks ago. We recorded a podcast that will be coming out soon, but we spoke about how the Lord helped me overcome my anxiety and depression through routines, decluttering, and organization. Um, on that talk, and I won't talk about it here, but um, I talked about how my anxiety and depression came about because of a lot of pregnancy losses and other things in life. And I got to a point where I was completely completely out of it and didn't know what to do. Um, so when I say before, where I have before, that was six plus years ago, I was unorganized. I had a cluttered house. When I say cluttered, you show me a picture of your house and might be embarrassed. I'll say, oh, that's nothing, girl. I, I have it on you. I had, you know, had to kick things out of the way just to walk through the house. Um, I was always stressed and I never knew where to begin. And now I'm going to be mentioning some authors throughout um, throughout the session today, but don't, don't feel like you have to write any of those names down because my last slide, I have some pictures of the books that I recommend where I got a lot of the information today. So what is executive functioning? Executive function and self-regulation skills are the mental processes that enable us to plan, focus attention, remember instructions, and juggle multiple tasks successfully. And that just makes me tired reading that sentence because we all have a million things put on us as parents and moms um, that we need to juggle. I feel like we're constantly in a, in a juggling act and we have so many people that need us and need our attention. The first thing that helped me was having a purpose for my every day. When I had severe depression, I didn't, I didn't feel like I had a purpose. Yes, I'm a believer in Christ, and, and I definitely um, believe that, that God has a purpose for us. 
but I realized that in the mundane of the everyday and what I was dealing with, I didn't have something every day that this is what I do on Monday. This is what I do on Tuesday. This is what I do on Wednesday. And maybe you can relate. I would wake up and say, oh, I don't want to get out of bed. And what are we going to do today? I know my kids have to do some schoolwork, but, <laughs> but what, what do we have to do? Um, the famous author and speaker Zig Ziglar said, if you aim at nothing, you will hit it every time. Um, I, I wish I had heard that when I was younger, because I felt like even, even before all of my, my issues with anxiety and everything, I, I feel like I was very scatterbrained and I always had a lot of interests and I didn't have a focus. Um, so from one author, I'll speak about a few times, you may have heard of her, the fly lady. She deals with home organization and cleaning. We're gonna talk a little bit about that today, not totally about cleaning the whole time, but um, she had what's called weekly home blessing, which is upkeep cleaning. And we'll talk about how you can get your kids involved with that because it will really help um, bring responsibility to the table with them and realize that they're a part of the family and to keep everything running smoothly so it's not all on you. I have a desk day. That is a day, it's my Tuesday. Tuesdays, I have a specific period of time, usually about 30 minutes, maybe less, <laughs> depending on how busy the day is going to be. But just where I can sit down and I can pay the bills that are coming up, I can maybe call and make an appointment that I need to make. Um, I can order something online that I've been needing to order. I have an errand day where I try to group my different errands together. So I'm not, you know, this day I'm not running to the post office to mail this. And then another day I'm dropping this off at a friend's house. And then another day I'm going to the grocery store. I try to group as much as I can on one day a week. And, you know, that takes some time to try to get the groove and figure out what works for you. But it really helps just to knock out a lot on the same day. I have another day of the week that I call car, purse, and friends. I always try to schedule friend time, especially for my children as they're now 10 and 12. Um, now it might not be every week that we can get together with friends, but all my friends know that my friend's day is Friday um, during the school year and it's afternoon. And so my friends know if they're gonna come over here or if I'm gonna go over there or if they're gonna meet at the park, they know we're usually free on Friday. And so that is our, that is our day. So I'll, I'll text a friend, Hey, do you want to come over on Friday? And, and they, they know that, um, cleaning out the purse, dumping old receipts, gum wrappers, getting your, if you, if you file your receipts, get them out and also clean out the car. And that can, that can be a dumping ground for all kinds of things, especially with kids, but I clean those out on Friday. I have a flex day, flex just for being flexible, a day where I don't have a specific purpose for that day because it's the overflow from the other days of the week that I, you know, life happens. Each week's not gonna look the same, but I know that I have a day, mine's Wednesday in the middle of the week where if something comes up, I know I can deal with it on Wednesday or if I didn't get to something, I can deal with it on Wednesday. And then to make sure to have a family fun day, each week. And that doesn't mean, you know, you go to an amusement park every Saturday, but just have something fun planned, playing a board game together, going for a walk together. Um, just, and I do plan that. I know that might sound silly to some people, but sometimes life gets so busy. You might think, oh, you know, it's been a long time since we sat down as a group and played this really long monopoly game, but trying to plan things together. And if you're a Christian like me, you will understand what a renew your spirit means. My family uses Sunday for that, um, to take time for church and sometimes family, but to limit um, all of our responsibilities on that day. Coming up to routines and routines, that's something that you can definitely help your children with. Routines set up your day and week for success and they help with focusing on what's most important. And you get to decide that. I, I listened to someone several years ago say, it's okay to say no, because I feel like so many of us take on so much responsibility and helping others that it's okay to say no, to guard what's most important for your family. 
Routines keep your home running smoothly and kids thrive on routines. They like to know what's coming up next. It eventually means less work for you and it becomes automatic when it's done consistently. A couple of weeks ago, Lisa and I were talking about making our beds and how so few people make their bed in the morning. And until a few years ago, I was one of those people. And one day I just decided I'm going to make my bed every day. That sounds so simple, but you know, it makes your room look better. It, it feels nice to pull down the sheets in the evening instead of just, you know, lopping into bed. And really after just a few weeks, it's automatic. It sounds funny. I just get up and I make my bed and it looks better. And I've now got my children in that routine of making their bed. You know, they occasionally need reminders like all of us, but it, you almost do it without thinking. Routines also can be soothing and comforting when life gets rough um, because your family life does move on. A few months ago, we had a death in the family. And because I had my routines down and the kids knew what to expect, I knew, I knew what I had in my pantry and my freezer to make a meal for them. I, I didn't think twice to have family come over and plan the funeral or just to grieve. Um, and so even when you have tough times, knowing what's coming up, knowing, knowing what's on the calendar, what you can take off or put on, routines help with that. So we're going to talk about a few routines that I have throughout my day. And why do I start with the evening routine? I start with the evening routine because I feel like, oh, I'm hearing myself. Um, when I start with the evening routine, I always try to think about what's going to make my next day easier. And the kitchen is the heart of the home. I know on the days when I fight myself with this and I haven't had the family help me clear the table, load the dishwasher, wipe down the counters and sink. The next morning when I wake up and I see my sink full of dirty dishes, that's not a good start to the day. <laughs> I automatically think, oh, now I have to do that and I have to do all these other things. So that's something the kids or your spouse can help with. They can help clear the table, load the dishwasher. Don't get, don't go sit down till you're done. Uh, I, I still struggle with that sometimes because the kids want to show you something and your husband wants to show you something. If I go sit down, I'm going to fall asleep on the couch eventually, and then I'm not going to do it. Um, so getting that done helps me have a smile on my face the next day when I come in. And at least I don't have to do the dishes first thing in the morning. Look at your calendar for the next day. We're going to talk about calendars in a little bit. And having a general bedtime, I don't care if you get to sleep at eight or 10 or midnight or 1 a.m., but having a general bedtime for yourself, not just your kids, actually has been proven to help, um, help your health and feeling better, your body gets used to not being so sporadic. The same for a general wake up time. My days are all a little bit different in the morning, but I do wake up pretty early. But before, before I taught ESL, which gets me up at early hours, um, before I did that, I did try to wake up at least 15 minutes before my kids. I have an early riser and I have a, a late sleeper, so. My day's kind of, somebody's awake at all hours, it seems like in my house. But if you can have get up a little bit before everyone else, make your bed and take a shower and get dressed. That sounds so simple. But some of us that don't leave the house very often or don't have a nine to five job, we tend to just want to lay around in our pajamas all day. And I have friends like that that will tell me, oh, you know, I was, I was in the kitchen trying to decide what was for dinner at five o'clock and I hadn't gotten dressed yet. <laughs> and so um, that used to be me also. But from the fly lady, I learned that if you get dressed, even if you're not leaving the house, you get dressed and put shoes on. And I fought that for so long because like the woman in this picture, I'm a barefoot girl. I love to be barefoot. If you put shoes on that tells your head, it's time to get to work. And it really does work. Give it a week. It makes you feel like you're going to do something. And I still remember the first time I started doing this, my kids kept asking, where are we going? Where are we going? Because I had clothes on. I wasn't in my yoga pants and my old oversized t-shirt. My kids couldn't believe, you know, mom's getting dressed. Um, so it's, it's natural now. And I don't make my kids wear shoes in the house. They, they don't like to do that. But I do make them 
you know, get dressed for the day. They do better on their schoolwork and focus more if, if they're dressed and not lounging around. Um, sit with a warm drink. Of course, I like coffee, but whatever it is, um, read your Bible or journal or whatever you'd like to do in some quiet. And I know for those of you that have little, little ones are probably like quiet. What is that? You know, you're just in a, you're in a season. If you're in that season where you have littles, um, that might not always be possible. I know it wasn't possible when mine were little, but I'm, I'm loving that part of life at the moment with some preteens that I can have a little bit of time. Um, but you can even put that in your evening or to actually get the kids to bed instead of staring at a screen, you know, watching a movie until you pass out, you know, maybe just set up, set a little timer that you're going to read for 15 minutes and not look at, look at a screen that will actually help you sleep better too. Uh, I always start a load of laundry when I wake up and I unload the dishwasher from the night before. And then I ask myself what's for dinner. And yes, I ask that usually before 7 a.m. <laughs> because if I don't, I'm going to get into the busyness of life. And then I'm going to be standing in front of the fridge at five o'clock, not knowing what's going on. Um, and one thing that's good about asking what's for dinner during the morning and then also the afternoon is you might be able to help yourself later by using a crock pot in the morning. You may be able to, like I'm about to talk about in the afternoon routine, you could be chop, chopping something up or simmering something on the stove for dinner while your children are doing some independent work. Um, we homeschool at the kitchen table pretty much, um, unless they're reading or something, they may be lounging on the couch, but I like to have them out here with me and I can do things while they're working on something independently and I'm still there to answer questions, but I, I used to just kind of sit there and either scroll on my phone or, um, or just sit there and stare at them. And then I thought, well, that's not helpful sitting there staring at them while they're you know, doing their math homework. I could be chopping carrots or onions or, you know, getting things ready for later. Um, so multitasking that way, as well as the laundry, my kids know oftentimes I'll bring the laundry basket with what I've washed and dried from this morning. I'll stand there and fold while, while they're doing work. Um, my children don't do their own laundry yet, but um, they do do most of their folding and, and hanging up and putting away. And they also bring it to me to my room each whenever you know they've changed. They leave it in my hamper for me. Um, check in with the kids on their work. If they're older, make sure that they're getting it done in a timely manner. You don't want to be moving stuff off the kitchen table at six o'clock trying to set the table. So check in with them. Quiet time for both you and the kids. This has kind of evolved for me and my kids. We all, if we really like a book, we want to read it. Um, I'm not one of those that's just like, oh, I'm going to go choose to read. If I have something that I'm really looking forward to, I'll read it. And so we kind of do our quiet time together in the afternoons now, maybe for about an 45 minutes or an hour, we all pick a book that we picked out of the library. It looks interesting. We just sit around and read. And that's been really nice. Um, some people put quiet time and put their kids in their room and that's fine too. I used to do that. Um, but also making time with the kids to play a game, go for a walk, play outside, read aloud, kind of like as a reward for finishing their work or for you know just a break, doing something fun. Earlier, I mentioned the weekly home blessing, and this is something that I incorporate with my kids, kind of like chores. Um, we don't really call it chores here because it is blessing your home because we are fortunate. We talk about how fortunate we are to have homes because a lot of people in the world don't. It's a great way um, to get them involved and setting a timer just for 10 minutes. This is not every day. We do this once a week, either on one day or depending on throughout the school year, we might do one a day for 10 minutes and we do other cleaning, but I could sit here all day and talk about cleaning. So <laughs> we're not going to do that, but this at least keeps, you know, the dust at bay once you, you've continued doing it on a regular basis. My son loves to vacuum. So he takes that one. For some reason, my daughter loves to clean toilets. I don't know where she got that from, but she she actually asked to clean. I guess she likes the scrubber. I don't I don't question it. I'm like, okay, you can clean toilets. And that's not on here, but she does that several several days a week. She switches up the bathrooms and things like that. But even young ones can empty all the trash cans into a big bag. 
and they can have fun pulling all the sheets off their bed. They may not wash them, but they may go get them for you. Um, so these are all things that we do. And it's not, it's not the whole house. You probably can't vacuum your whole house in 10 minutes. It's just the high traffic areas or some place that's been neglected. So that really helps get the grime off of my house. Well, that was the cleaning. Now we're gonna talk about some, someone called David Allen who wrote a book called Getting Things Done. And I have that at the, I have that a picture of it at the slide at the end. Um, but this is, we all have so many ideas swirling around in our head, thinking about things that need immediate attention, some things have multiple steps, some things we have to discuss with other people. Some things are coming up days from now, weeks from now, months from now. And we're thinking about all of it at the same time. I think, especially as women, we can all relate. We can think about five things at the same time. And that's very stressful when you think about it, especially if it's nothing you can do. You can't do anything about it at the moment. Um, so he says to get it all down on paper. And the reason I do it on paper and not in my phone, and some people love to put everything in their phone and that's cool. Like I'm, I've been known to put stuff on my calendar, my phone, but I get sucked into my phone. I know that if I go in there to put something on my calendar, I'm gonna see my emails pop up. I'm gonna see a text coming through. I'm gonna go on Facebook or something and get sucked into it and then look up and it's been an hour that I've been on my phone. <laughs> so I get it all out on paper and it doesn't have to be a fancy journal, anything like that, just literally a piece of paper. Right, that's the first step. And the first time you do this, it will take a lot longer because you haven't done it because you have all of this in your mind. But to make out the list, for example, I went in the garage and I saw that a light bulb needed to be changed. That's in my head. I saw my kids were trying to get ketchup out of the bottle and we're out. That's in my head. My son needs a haircut appointment. I need to make that appointment. That's in my head. Um, my other kid has a math test on Friday. I need to help them study for that. All these things are on my head. But if you just list it out on a piece of paper, that's the first step to get it out of your head. The second step is for each of those things to write down the next thing you need to do for each task. It might take just one thing to get that thing completed, but it might take more than one. Um, just write the next thing you have to do, for example, a birthday party. My daughter had a birthday party last month. And of course, multiple things go into having a birthday party. So you just need to think you've got birthday party in your head. So you may have written birthday party on your, on your piece of paper. Well, well, what does that mean? What does birthday party mean? Do you need to send out invitations? Do you need to order a cake or a gift? Do you need to buy balloons? Do you need to look online for party games? So if you want to list out all the action steps, if you're feeling, you know, feeling real productive, you can do that. Or you can just write down the next thing to get it out of your mind. After you've written your action steps, we have four categories you can put them in. These are the categories I use. And what I used to do when I started this, I would fold a paper into fourths like this, and I would write down desk, errand day, discuss, and smartphone. And I would write one in each section. Then the list that I just made of all the random stuff in my head went in a specific place. Desk is something I can do on my computer or I can do at home while I'm there. I can make an appointment. I can order something I need to order. Outside the home, that's obviously going to the store or delivering something to a friend that you needed to do. You can put that on errand day. Discuss is something you can't do yourself, but you need to talk to somebody about it. Discuss it with your boss or your family or friends. Smartphone and office in a bag. I say office in a bag because those of us that know about the fly lady, she wrote her book more than 20 years ago before smartphones existed. And this was really helpful for me. She said, and I don't have an office in a bag. That was where she said to put stationery and all this other stuff. So you can get things done while you're out of the house, but you can still get like some administrative things done. Well, what that helped me with is 
on my little smartphone list, I've got Amazon on my, on my phone. If I need to order something, I can put that in, but it's not urgent. I can put it there. And while I'm standing in line in the grocery store or standing in line at, you know, the DMV, I can, I can do something on my phone or I have, you know, some texts from some friends I have to respond to, but I have to think about, I'll put them on there. And then when you're out of the house or sitting and waiting for, you know, your kid at soccer practice, you can have a list of things that you can get done on your smartphone instead of just um, wasting some time. And so, and sometimes it's fun to waste time. I waste time sometimes, but sometimes I plan to waste time. <laughs> But we all need we all need to get things done, you know, when we're out and about. That's very helpful. And so transfer your list with the action steps. This sounds like this is going to take a long time, and it takes a long time the first time. But I promise, if you consistently do this, and we're going to go on to this next page. Oh, birthday party example. But consistently do it. You'll automatically, when you have a thought, you'll write it down, and we'll get to that in a minute. And your list will get smaller, I promise. Um, it'll become a habit. So going back to the birthday party example, these were the four things that popped in my head about the birthday party. And these are the places I would put them. Do you need to send out in invites, invitations? If they're physical invitations, can you order them on desk day or on your smartphone? Or as I did, as I do with my kids' birthday parties, I just send out a mass text to all the moms. I don't, I don't want to order all this you know, spend money and order all these invitations. But if you do, that's great. I think that's awesome. But it's something I can just do on my phone. Do I need to order a cake or a gift? If I can order it online, I do it at my desk. If it's something I pick up, I put it on errand day. Buy balloons, that could be errand day, that could be desk day. Look for online party games, that could also be desk day. So you can see how one item can, can go to different categories depending on what works for you. But that way you're not stressing all oh, these things I have to do. You know, if you do it long enough, you know, far ahead enough, and it takes time to get into that practice, I can think, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna order that stuff on Tuesday. And when I'm out on errand day on you know, Thursday, I'll pick up this, this, and this. You can divide it up for less stress on you. For things that don't fit, which things will, we're thinking of stuff for next week, next month. Put them on a calendar. I have a master calendar, just a plain calendar on my refrigerator. And if it's something that relates to the whole family, I just put it there so they can all see it. Um, and so if it's something for next week or next month that you can't action right now, just get it on paper and, and then get it out of your mind. Because if you can't do anything about it, there's no use thinking about it at the moment. Pending is waiting to hear back from someone on something you can't do anything about it right now. Like, you know, I've talked to my husband about this or my friend about this. We're trying to decide if we want to do it. Just get that on your pending, on your pending list. And also a wish list because we are, you know, we're moms, but we're people too. We're not just moms. I feel like sometimes when we become moms, we we lose our identity. You know, we have wishes and things. On my wish list for several years now, I've had a palm tree. I want a palm tree in my backyard. That is yet to happen because it's expensive and a lot of planning to get a palm tree put in your yard, but that's on my wish list. And so anything that's a good, that's something good that you want to do, it may not happen in six months or even a year from now, but just to have a list to get that out of your mind and on paper as well. And then I just check this list every week on my desk day, just to see what's coming up next week. And I'll, then I'll put it on my calendar. If I didn't have to action it, I don't need to I don't need to be thinking about it. So here's what I was mentioning earlier. From now on, whenever you have a thought about anything, write it down. My mother-in-law has been doing this for quite a while. And when I was first married many years ago, I thought, oh, I'll do that when I'm older. <laughs> like, I don't need to write that down. And I'm, I'm older now. I have to write that down. So she's so funny because she, she always remembers everything. And I started noticing when I'm over at her house, she has, a, she has a note card that says, and she has it on top of something like for Charlotte or for another member of family. And like, you know, I need to give them this. She puts note, she has note cards all over with these little reminders. And I thought that's really smart. So I actually carry a note card in my purse. 
So if I'm out and I have a thought, I write it down. It takes, what, 10 seconds? And then I'll remember it for later. And then you can put it on a calendar or something else. Um, sometimes I just pass the card to my children and I dictate to them, gives them writing practice. Um, the do it now principle, if it takes less than two minutes, do it now. I tell my children that they know the do it now principle. Instead of just dropping your shoes at the front door and your jacket and your book bag or whatever else, it only takes you, what, 30 seconds to go to your room and put it, put it away. So the, if it doesn't take long, just do it. Don't write it down if it takes two minutes. If it's a phone call you have to make or a text, you just have to answer really quick. Just do it and don't even write it down. Using a timer can help with many things. We'll talk about a timer again a little bit when it comes to schoolwork, um, but also utilizing free pickup services. I love Walmart pickup. Uh, I don't use it every week, but I think it's nationwide. If you spend $35 or more on groceries, you can do free pickup and you can set a time and date for it. And that has been a lifesaver. Like I said, I don't do it every week, but if I know we're having a super busy week and I don't have time to spend an hour and a half at the grocery store, that free pickup helps me so much. <laughs> and I just set it for my errand day and they've done the shopping for me. This is not a plug for Walmart. There's many places that do these kind of things, but that's just the one that I utilize to, to free up some time. That takes me to menu planning. We'll only talk briefly about this because this is another thing along with clutter I could talk about all day. But this was something, and I can't remember where I got this from, but, and it doesn't have to be a notebook, it could be a piece of paper. To write down a list of your family's favorite meals, ask your family, each person, what are their favorite things? They might remember things that you forgot about. Um, looking and seeing what's in your freezer and pantry, what you currently have, and you don't have to make a list, but make a mental note of things that are about to go out of date or things that you could use to either save money or plan your meals around. Look at your calendar, what's coming up that week. Uh, we have small group at church, not at church, but at a different location every other Tuesday night. And so I know every other Tuesday night, I either need to bring something to share for dinner or every once in a while we don't have dinner, but know, know what's coming up to know if you need to make dinner or if you need to take something somewhere or if your child has, you know, a sport practice till 6 p.m., that would be a good day for a freezer meal because you might not want to come home at 6.30 and then make a whole meal. So that, that's a way you can plan around. Um, search for recipes online by ingredient. If you have things that need to go out, like I have several cans of cranberry sauce from Thanksgiving that I need to, <laughs> I need to use soon and I don't feel like in June eating a can of cranberry sauce. But, you know, finding something, some baked item within in is something I've been doing to try to use those up. And write things down as soon as you see you're running low on something. A friend of mine has, always has a piece of paper on her, on her refrigerator. And I can see all her kids' little, um, little different handwriting. It's really cute. But when they see something's running low, they don't have to tell mom, oh, we're almost out of ketchup. They, they just write it on the list. And I thought that was really neat. I think I'm actually going to take that from her because it's one less thing that she has to think about if she, you know, she went to the store and comes home and sees, oh, I didn't know we were almost out of that. The kids kind of take care of it and her kids think it's fun. So I think I'm going to steal that idea from her. Uh, a cluttered house is a cluttered mind. I think that is very true. Um, building decluttering into your routines, especially with papers as we have with everything school-wise especially that we have um, just five to ten minutes a day on a timer just attack an area if it's a table where something gets dumped if it's a drawer that you hate and can't stand for the longest time I had this drawer in my bathroom that I just I just didn't even want to deal with and one time I decided I'm going to time myself and see how long you know old nail polish and contact solution all this stuff it took me seven minutes to do the entire drawer. And here I had been putting it off for weeks so I don't wanna look in that drawer. I mean, really, it sometimes it doesn't take as long as you think. So um, if you just set a timer, you know, bigger things are gonna take more, but you see there's an end in sight. That's like with kids. If I say, hey, why don't you work on this in your room for 10 minutes? We'll set a timer. 
they know there's an end. They're not going to be doing this forever. The timer is very helpful. And that's to get your kids involved with their own possessions too. Um, just talk another talk when I was talking with Lisa about being grateful for everything that we have because there's many, many places in the world where they would love to have the things we're not using. And so we need to be good stewards of what we have. And, um, and just for them to be grateful and also take them to a donation center. If you have a place, there's a place in my town where um, it's run by many churches and I, my kids and I go there to donate things occasionally. And it's really good for them to see the people that are coming to, to get the things that they no longer when they realize they do have a use and a purpose and someone else would love to have this. Um, so that's been really good, but getting clutter down, you know, that's a constant because we always have things coming into our home, don't we? So setting up your school year, every state, of course, as probably most of you know, every state is different um, with your state requirements, what they require of you for number, um, number of days needed, um, percentage of curriculum that needs to be completed. My state is we need 180 days of school and the association I'm a part of, they require 70% minimum of your um, curriculum done for the year. And so it's different for every state, but know what your state's requirements are. And then when I plan out our school year, the first thing I do is figure out holidays, vacations, and flex days. And so, you know, we always know Christmas is December 25th, but I just did this the other day for our new school year find out when you know Easter is, any other holidays your family celebrates, um, vacations or going to see family or when your spouse is off work or when you're off work. And then flex days, I use the word flex again for days that I don't have, I don't, I don't say it's a, I say it's a school day, but we don't necessarily need it to complete everything because there's gonna be times when you are sick or your kids are sick. And of course we don't plan for sickness, but those are kinds of to plan for the unexpected. And so, you know, last, last fall, my whole family was sick for over a week. And so that was over a week that on my calendar I had had planned for schoolwork and here we didn't get any of it done. And so having those flex days, it's kind of like having a makeup day in school just having those kind of as a buffer for yourself. And then once you've figured out how much you need to complete for your state requirements or the requirements you've put on yourself, um, figure out, just to use, use division, divide it by how many weeks there are, or if you're gonna do a five day week or a four day week throughout the year, but divide it up to see how much for each subject you need. And once you have that basics down, like, you know, I need to read in my reading book, I need to read this many pages this month, then you can get your kids involved. My kids enjoy doing this. We're going to do this next week because we, my family, we school year round. We take several weeks off here and there throughout the, throughout the year. And they do, they do less in the summer, maybe three or four days a week, but um, they are excited to plan their calendar and see how much they have to do of each subject each week. And it really helps them have ownership of their tasks um, and see, okay, well, I have to read this many pages and I have to do this much of my math lesson this week and they can break it down by how many um, days that week they would be doing school. And another thing Lisa and I talked about having discussions with them about how long things take. She had mentioned about her son taking a class outside the home and just writing on his planner or his calendar, just writing that the hour that it was, but she had to explain to him that we have to drive there, we have to drive home, you have to get ready beforehand. A lot of times when you're teaching them how to use a calendar, you really need to explain everything that goes into that hour long class. It's not just the hour. So it's teaching them time management. Um, they can also list out their personal care goals and chores, if you call them chores or things that they need to get done. My children pretty much know, you know, I still have to remind them, of course, but what to, that I expect their teeth to be brushed in the morning. I expect them to be dressed before they start their schoolwork. 
I expect that their bed be made. And my daughter still, she likes to check things off. She's like me. She likes to do her little check marks next to what she's done. And that just keeps them accountable for, um, for just personal care that they should continue as they get older. And then put fun things in their notebooks and their calendars, going to the park, art time, TV or computer time they can have, friends and family. Don't put everything in their planner or their calendar that just looks like work all the time. They need things to look forward to. And then also teach them how to use a timer to break up tasks. Like I said earlier with, with cleaning, you know, let's go, why don't you go work on this drawer for 10 minutes and then set a timer. And a lot of kids like to try to beat a clock or they like to see how much they can get done. Um, and like I said earlier, they, they have an end in sight. They're not gonna be doing this forever. I know some talking with some friends, some of their kids do, do better with a timer when they're doing their schoolwork. I haven't done it with my kids with their schoolwork, but I don't know if it might stress them out. It might stress some kids out to see a timer going down. But, um, but some kids have, have actually done better with having a timer, just knowing, you know, I'm going to be working on this for a certain amount of time. So that might be something that works for you. In relation to all of the papers that we have for school, um, this is another thing. I'm going to talk about the last one first to talk to your homeschool association about what needs to be kept. Um, every state is different. What if you might need to hand something in or if you need to show something or just have something prepared if somebody wants to look at what you've done. Um, I keep both my children's um, papers separate. And this is something if you started at the beginning of your school year, um, you just continue it and it's not that big of a deal. Um, if you, you know, we, I keep my daughter's papers separate from my son's and they keep their subjects separate. So what I have personally, and it's worked really well the past few years, is each, each kid has their own box with a three ring binder, a cheap three ring binder for each subject. And that day when they're done, before they have any of their extra free time or something extra, whatever, they have to have, oh, here's my papers for today. You know, this is, this is my English that I did and here's my math paper. And they don't always have to be the one to put it in there. If you want to put it in the notebook, that's fine. But they're responsible for their own papers. And I keep, okay, this is my daughter's science notebook. This is her math notebook. This is her spelling notebook. If you just do that every day, you're not going to have the big box of papers. I have a friend that she thinks it's funny. She, she literally, she has four children. She literally just throws all her papers in a box. And she, she said, you know, if someday they want to come see what we've done, I'll say, give me a week and then I'll have, I'll have something for, and she thinks it's funny. I thought that would just be my nightmare having to spend a week trying to, what paper is this? What subject is this for? And so if you do it earlier on and have your kids um, kind of in charge of their own things, um, that will definitely, that will help you in the long run. And I don't have, I, I tried to do the cart thing, having my stuff in a cart and all that, but I just have a pretty cabinet in my living room. We call it the homeschool cabinet. That's all it's in there. But my son knows which drawers are his. My daughter knows what drawers are hers. And that's just where they keep their things and we can close it. And it, we don't have to think about it unless it's time for school, they can go get their stuff. Here are some books that I had mentioned. Um, this is probably, you know, I mean, it's not, it's no Shakespeare, but it's one of my favorite books of all time, which is Sync Reflections. Um, she overcame a lot of anxiety and depression. She actually went to um, a mental facility for a short time. She talks about that in her um, first chapter and she's a believer and she talks about the power of routines and having, you know, caring about yourself, having self-care. We didn't talk about that that I could talk about this all day, as you probably can tell. Um, the second book is Getting Things Done by David Allen. Don't feel like that is, when you first start reading it, you think this is for like a corporate person, you know, but like I said at the beginning, we are, we are, you know, the CEO or the CFO or the C, you know, whatever, oh, whatever you and your spouse decide, you're in charge of your home you should be running it. You're supposed to be training. We're supposed to be training our children 
Um, and so he has a lot of really good tips that are good for anybody, whether you're in, um, you know, a nine to five setting or not. I didn't even get to her, but she is Marie Kondo who wrote the life changing magic of tidying up. She is Japanese. Um, I did her system. I have done it three times. I don't think I'll ever have to do it again. Um, it is where you are gathering everything of one item at a time and you are deciding whether it brings you value, whether you need it or love it. And that was just a fantastic book for me. My children have, have done it with me and it was, it was really great. And that's if you have, if you're overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that you have, um, because sometimes 15 minutes a day is not going to cut it <laughs> with some, some of the amounts of stuff we have in our home. Um, Zig Ziglar, I had a hard time picking my favorite Zig Ziglar book. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily my favorite, but the Zig Ziglar book called Goals was really good. Um, I really, really enjoyed that book. Um, and then my son wanted to put his two cents in. Um, and so I said, sure. He found out what I was doing. He just finished this book. This is not for parents. This is actually for students. But my son, who is not a big reader, doesn't do it for fun unless I'm like, hey, let's sit down and read. He really enjoyed Tim Tebow's book, Know Who You Are, Live Like It Matters. And it is directed to homeschoolers. The foreword, he says, dear homeschooler, it's awesome. Um, I did not get to read the whole thing, but my husband and I both, um, you know, read bits and pieces before we, if we don't know about a book, we, we, you know, look over it before we give it to our kids but it really talks about personal responsibility and finding out, you know, what God wants for your life. And he really enjoyed it. He said, you need to tell them about the Tim Tebow book. <laughs> so that was um, his two cents on that book, because I feel like that really will, might give some kids a sense of direction or see, you know, why we need to um, be in charge of our own stuff too, not just our parents. So that was a good book. So I think Lisa said we might have some time for some questions. I tried to go as fast as I could, <laughs> but um, I don't know, Lisa, if, if I'm supposed to be, I haven't even had the chat open. I don't, I have the chat open or what we need to do. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> oh, we, we've been chatting. <laughs> You've been chatting. I haven't, I've been seeing the little numbers, but I've just been gabbing and I was like, I'm probably going to talk for three hours and these poor moms need to go do stuff, but I could talk about this all day. <laughs> Really good. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions? Any comments? Um, whoops. I'm trying to stop the screen share. So yeah, Devin, what we're going to do is we're going to stop the recording and we'll, um, I'm going to actually stop recording right now.